even when we're going to Jesus when he died on the cross. Power go die. Power get up. Let the master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. You have got to make this your foundation. How Jesus loves the cross. Welcome again to Jesus This Answer Ministries broadcast on Pastor Rob Scale. I tell you, did y'all, y'all are calling your friends. Uh, I'm teaching on the promise of the Father. Oh, we need to thank God every day for the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. That there's no way, saints, that we can live for God in our own strength. There's no way we can serve the Lord in our own strength. It takes God's grace for us to serve Him. It takes God's spirit to lead and guide us. Let's go back to Luke 24. We'll just read verse 49. Jesus said, Behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry you in the city of Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. And then we know if you go read over in Acts chapter 2, the Bible said that, and when the day of Pentecost was come, you know, and people say, well, well, uh, God ain't ain't feeling people with the Holy Ghost to speak in tongues no more. Well, I mean, where, where do you read that at? You know, can, can you let me read that? Well, um, whether it, it, it read, this is done away. Uh, we don't do this no more. And I know one verse uh, they might try to use uh, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. But that's talking about after you get to heaven. Uh, and I'll read it to you uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 for in, in verse uh, um, 8 love never faileth but whether there be prophecies they shall fail whether there be tongues they shall cease whether there be knowledge it shall vanish away well he can't be talking about knowledge vanishing away now nah, we're going to learn and he can't be talking about prophecies gone because God is still speaking by his spirit and prophecies here on the earth. And so tongues, he, he got to be talking about after we get to heaven. We we won't need none of that. Amen. We, we'll know it. And so uh, on the day of Pentecost, when it was fully come, uh, they were all with one accord in one place. There's 120 of them in the upper room. And suddenly there came a sound of heaven. From heaven is of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled out the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set up on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, I done heard ministers teach this, you know, uh, this promise of, of, of the Father. He, he couldn't have promised it to, to the early church and then. And then in the last day, you say that promise ain't for y'all. Anything that Jesus gave to them, he gives to us. And he gives it to us by faith. Remember, saints, they, they can say that miracles and healings are done away. But let me tell you what ain't done away is faith. Faith ain't done away with. And so if, if, if people back then received their healing and miracle by faith, and faith ain't done away because the Bible said in Hebrews 11, 6, for without faith it's impossible to please God. Then could nobody else please God if faith is done away with and you couldn't even get saved. Well, by grace are you saved through faith. So if faith ain't done away with and that woman was made whole by her faith, then faith can make you whole today. Faith can, can cause you to receive anything in your life that you need from God. Hallelujah. And so they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, you have to understand, Jesus had done already breathed on them. We read that yesterday in John chapter 20, verse 21. Jesus breathed on them. And they received the Holy Ghost. They received being born of the Spirit. Now they're being filled with the Spirit. One is born of the Spirit. That's when you receive the eternal life of God. You just receive a brand new nature. But then when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, I remember, um, you know, I, I, I went out, been soul winning, been evangelist for years. 
before God called me in the office of the prophet, and I still carry that evangelist anointing. And, you know, you all want a real Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost revival? I, I'm available like Sunday night through Wednesday night. And, and um, uh, I mean, if the Lord tell me, I, I, I'll go further. But, but uh, I, I see these signs and wonders. I see the Lord do miracles. I mean, I'm talking about healings. Uh, 99 of all percent of all the churches I've ever been in, and I've, I've been in thousands. Uh, I've seen miracles, healings, deliverances, and I, I I tell you one thing really operates in me is breaking the bondages off of people with Jesus anointing, and so they they were filled. I got filled. Back in uh, July of 1988, next day after I got born again, it was on a Wednesday. And and, uh, and 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 power came to me. Well, I, I was out witnessing with this man. He wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. Preacher, good man, good brother in the Lord. And and uh, and, and uh, devils rose up, and and it scared the daylights out of him. That it scared me. Um, and, and, and I went and ministered to people by the Spirit. He, he didn't know, never know, never know the Lord was like that. Then he got filled with the Holy Ghost. He's been doing it ever since. You'd be surprised if you'll get filled with the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and listen, listen to me, son. Because I know some of y'all in, 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 in a lot of denomination churches, and they teach y'all against these things. And But you really got a heart for God. And some of y'all done been in churches and done been taught these things and you don't live a spirit-filled life because the way you live, the way you talk, the way you think, you don't stay full of the Holy Ghost. You might get in a service and the Spirit come on you and you get filled with Him and then you go out and start thinking wrong and then all, all that just leak out of you. Because you have to continually be filled with the Holy Ghost. You, 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 you know, you're in pride to think that you know, you just as strong as, as you was right at first when you got filled with the Holy Ghost and you're not continually uh, praising, worshiping, singing, praying in the spirit, uh, being at church where you can continually be filled with the Holy Ghost. And and usually, usually a lot of times I, I just uh, uh, be reading and I just stop worshiping the Lord. And a lot of times I just ask, Lord, Lord, I pray you just feel me afresh and anew with your spirit. And I just believe, believe I'm filled. And you can go on, watch, and see that you are filled. And so, but what people done did is they done, this is this is in, in Acts 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with, they done made, because Jesus done came in them, that they got it all. And you don't. You, you just don't know what you're missing. Oh, I just don't believe that. Well, see, you won't believe the scriptures. I can't help you. You might well, you know, say twinkle, twinkle, little star. I wonder how you are. You know, you would get more out of that than to tell me you ain't going to believe what the word says. And so when Jesus breathed on them, the Bible said they received the Holy Ghost. So that that is he changed their nature inside. So they have the ability to, to, to live just like Jesus. But when you be filled with the Holy Ghost, he comes up on you. And I'm telling you, I have seen the Holy Spirit fly off me. See, I can't lose the new birth because the Bible says in, in Ephesians 4 verse 30 that, that, that we are grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. That don't grieve the Holy Spirit whereby you are sealed to the day of redemption. So what God did when Jesus came in, he sealed me. Why? Because well, that spirit can't see it. If he could see it, he could go back to death. And the only part of us that can see it is our, our flesh and our thinking. That's why the devil comes and seduces people. And brings doctrines of devils that he know the Holy Spirit's not going to be involved with. So you see people just say, well, you know, the Lord's taking me through this like Job. Now the Holy Spirit's not going to work with you. He's not going to work with you.
what you're talking like that. And when you know the Lord don't heal, do they see the Holy Spirit's not going to work with you? It's talking and, and believing like that. You, you have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you that the only thing the Holy Spirit's hooking up with on this earth. And I'm going to read it to you. Now, I'm not going to, you know, tell you. I'm going to read it to you in John 15, verse 26. Listen to this. When the comforter is it, come, Jesus said, whom I will send unto you from the Father. Even the spirit of truth. This is it. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. People argue about that. The spirit of truth, the comforter. All of them are the same words. The spirit of life, the Holy Spirit. All of these are the same. Even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father. Now get this. Get this, Captain. Now listen to this. He, see the Holy Spirit, spirit of truth. Comforter shall testify of me. Jesus said in red in John 15, 26, he said, the Holy Spirit will testify of me. And so you get people, they ain't talking about Jesus. They talking about them. They talking about what they think. They talking about how they feel. They talking about what they think the Bible means. But it's the Holy Spirit who testifies of Jesus. And so what doesn't happen is, is that people have been taught so bad and so wrong that they don't think Jesus when they are answering questions. Now, the Apostle Paul taught this in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study it to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly denying the word of truth. I remember when I first got saved, people told me up in the Bible. You don't know nothing. And they were right. I didn't. And did you know what that brought to me that I didn't know nothing? It brought being ashamed. I didn't know how to answer people. I didn't know how to walk in where I saw other people act. Well, Pastor, what did you do? I went and started studying and seeking the Lord to teach me, seeking the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus to teach me. Anything Jesus teaches you, it's going to be through his Holy Spirit. And so I began to seek the Lord to teach me where I wouldn't be ignorant. But when you study out 2 Corinthians 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. When you don't speak, Jesus said. You don't speak, Jesus taught. You don't speak, Jesus did this on the cross. This is how you can tell it from the scriptures, the spirit of God, 1 John 4, verse, verse or 1 through, through 6, where you can tell the spirit of God and the spirit of error. You can tell the spirit of God and the spirit of Antichrist. One says that every, every spirit, everyone who confesses that what Jesus said in the flesh, that's God. Every spirit that confesses not what Jesus said in the flesh when he had a fleshly body and what he said from God, if you don't agree with Jesus, you are not from God. And people just be saying stuff that Jesus didn't teach. And you might really love them, but I, I, I love everybody. I, I really do it, but I ain't going to love what you say to G against Jesus. And so when you study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. Now, now let, let me help y'all. This, this is a little deep here. One thing I done learned about the Lord, and I thank God for this too. I mean, I thank him. He never teaches smart people nothing. Now, I'm not talking about 
people that you know got PhDs or masters or uh, I'm not talking about smart like that. I'm talking about you you gonna come and tell God what you think and feel about the Bible. Them smart people. You're gonna tell Jesus in, in, in Luke 10 21. Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you have hid these things from the wise and prudent, that's intellectuals, and have revealed them unto babes. A babe in the Greek means an infant, one who is totally dependent on somebody else. <clears throat> these are the only people God revealed to you. You can sit in church and be the best worker in church, and God don't reveal stuff to you. Because you think you're smart. Think you're better than anybody. You, 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 and he don't reveal nothing to you. Nothing. You can't make it work. You, you can't live in his life every day. Because you're trying to think you know it instead of humbling yourself. The Bible said in Luke uh, chapter, chapter 14 verse 11. No, I'm sorry, chapter 11 verse 14. That those who exalt they self will be abased. Abased means you will stay in your human strength. Those who humble themselves, God will exalt. He will teach them, lead them, and guide them in all truth. This word truth in 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That word truth is in the Greek, it's a lexical Greek and quotes. I got this out of, means the reality pertaining to the appearance that was in Jesus. See, we're not, we're not supposed to, to come up with truth. We're supposed to read Jesus and come up with truth. And then we go to the apostles and we see that they in line with Jesus. And then we, 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 because you can go read the letters and take them out of context. If they're not in line with Jesus teachings and the cross, because you, you can't get the cross out of land. So he died and he forgave the whole world. So, so you you have to line up all the teachings uh, of, of Jesus, the teachings of the epistles, apostles, John, Peter, James, Paul, all of them with the cross. The cross is the greatest picture of God and his love that you will ever get is in Jesus on that cross. The cross, you all shows you God's judgment, God's love, God's forgiveness. It shows you curses. It, 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 it shows you who God is and what God do in Christ Jesus. And, and uh, really, really to really understand uh, God, you, you have to get a picture and a revelation of Jesus Christ from God. The Father has to show you who Christ is and then Christ has to turn around and teach you who the Father is. You go read that in Matthew 16 and, and you start in 13 and go on down to 18 where the Lord uh, uh, asked the disciples who the men say I am. Peter said you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Pete, Jesus said Samuel by Jonah flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee but my Father which is in heaven. And Jesus said on this rock I'm going to be on my church. And the gates of hell are not going to prevail against it. And so the gates of hell will never prevail against those who have revelation of who Jesus is and then do what Jesus said. That's what the devil can't work against is the words that came from Jesus' lips from God. Now you read this in John 7. And I'm going to, I want to read you some scriptures uh, uh, that 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 will verify this. Jesus said uh, uh, in verse thirteen, "How be it, no man uh, 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 spake open of him for fear of the Jews." Now, about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught, and the Jews marvelled, saying, "How knoweth this man letters? Heaven never learned. He ain't been to our school." And you know, I hear people sometimes, they say, we got the greatest Bible school, the greatest church. Uh, we got the greatest bishop, the greatest pastor. Oh, you just lying. 
God allowed to have a pastor back in the wood you don't even know about. That's a thousand times more grace than the one you got. What you ought to do is just thank God for the anointing and the grace upon him. We, you, you're really a baby Christian and immature when you're comparing uh, a man when it, I, I pray it's, it's God working through him. You don't, you don't think that he's really great, do you? No, 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 no. You know, people got up one time and another, and I just want to introduce this great man of God, Pastor Robert Scales. I got up there and said, look, y'all, ain't nothing great about me. I said, I got a great God. I said, woo, glory to God. I got a great God who I serve. Woo, hallelujah. Because I know they ain't been around. In the midnight hour when I couldn't make it without the Lord, I had to call on him constantly. He's had to deliver me, help me, strengthen me, be there for me. So what in the world is great about us? Woo! Nothing. Nothing. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So how in the world are you going to be great? Huh? No, God just make me look great because I do what he tell me and you see more of him being lived in my life. And he makes us look great. Makes us look spectacular. But hallelujah, but down on the inside I know exactly who it is that's doing the work. Woo! Glory to God. Woo! I tell y'all, y'all be having them, you know, them them anniversaries and, and I mean just puffing them pastors up with devils. And telling them how great they are, that's all that stuff is junk. The most honorable, the most high. You ain't the most high. God is the most high. Woo, hallelujah. Y'all are, listen, I don't say, I, and I'm not against it. Y'all want to do that. You understand? Because I believe you should honor your pastor. And, but, but, but I don't have no anniversary. I scare you don't, yeah, no, they honor me with some money. But they can't, we, we can't take no day for me. <laughs> Let me give you the scripture. This, listen, every morning, every morning, you start really, really, 12 01. You start. This is the day that the Lord have made. Now, I just don't see no day I done made. Oh, rejoice in me. No, the Bible tells you how to honor that man. You respect and reverence that gift and, and you give that man some money. When he done sold into you spiritual things, you sow into him come. And I'm going to tell you something. If you get people in church and they don't want to give their pastor, they don't want to honor their pastor no money, it, it keeps you from being in strife with him when you, when you honor and bless him. You show you appreciate what God done gave you. And if he if he don't feed you good, then I, I, I wouldn't give him a damn. I wouldn't. Now, now let me get ready to close. Uh, Jesus said in verse 16. Now listen to this, Kevin. Jesus answered him and said, My doctrine is not man, but he is that sent me. So all the teaching, all the words that Jesus spoke to the church, came from the Father. He only spoke what he heard God say. He only did what he saw God do. So really, saints, when you read in John 12, verse 40, 40, uh, 44, uh, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Jesus said, I am come a light into the world, that whoever believeth in, on me, should not abide in darkness. Jesus said you won't stay. The word abide in the Greek means you won't stay in darkness. It's just, it's just impossible. It's the wrong gospel. It's not the Holy Spirit. The promise of the Father was to send us another comforter. Just like Jesus, who is Jesus, who will teach us how to walk in the truth that Jesus himself walked in. 
And it's amazing that when people hear this, they say, oh, no, Pastor, I, I can't do all that. Who told you that? See, see, you got a choice to believe in him who has all power or believe in yourself and you have none. You have a choice. And so it's, it's up to you. Are you going to choose to believe what Jesus said? Or are you going to choose to believe how you feel and what things look like? I want to make available to you this six CD series, The Promise of the Father. On the screen is our address. I'll make your checks or money orders to Robert Scales Ministries, Post Office Box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. Saints, uh, these will bless you. Uh, if you order these, I'll, I'll give you a, a free copy of my book, God's Grace Explained. Also, if I have a part two, and if you want to order that, I'll give you a special on that for $50. And if you ask me, I'll send you a free copy of my book, no, uh, God's Grace Explained. So order these today. And also, you can go on our webpage, robertscalesministries.org, and you can use your credit card to order these. And so I love you. And I know these will be a tremendous blessing. It's a lot of revelation, a lot of truth on these that will change your life forever. I want to invite you all to Jesus as a church. On the screen is our, our address, 332 West Main Street, Watertown, Tennessee, 37184. And that's where God sent me. He sent me to Alexandria, told me to start a work down there. I did a Bible study for over two years, and then the Lord told me to start church. And so God blessed us with some land and a church building, and we remodeled it. This is this you ought to come just see the church, and 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 sense the presence of God in it. It'll bless your life. So it, it, uh, the service times on the screen: nine o'clock Sunday school, ten o'clock regular service, and and seven o'clock p.m. on Thursday. Our, our midweek service is on Thursday. And listen, you can stream. You can go online and, and stream these services live, but you need to come. Amen. And you'll be tremendously blessed. Well, I want to thank my partners. Thank my friends. Thank you for your prayer. Thank you for your financial support. Saints, it really helps me. And I know God wants me to take this message around the world. And I know if you all will obey God and start helping me, we'll be able to get this and go on where we're on nationally and go around the world to take this message. So pray and ask the Lord how he would have you to be a blessing. Don't ever count out a little. It's too little. It's not. If enough of y'all give and help, we'll be able to do great things in the kingdom of God. Well, my prayer for you is you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. From Jesus and some ministries, I'm Pastor Robert Scales. Remember, saints, as Christ loved you on the cross and gave his life, go believe and live in that love every day and have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.